everyone, Screaming Geek Meteor. I am Jerry the Geek. Uh, today we've got a discussion for you. We're going to talk about uh, bad movies that I like. Uh, but before we get into that, if you like physical media, you know, if you like, you know, 4Ks, uh, Blu-rays, even DVDs, if you like home theater, just movies in general, you know, if you like that stuff, check out my other videos on my channel because I do uh, reviews, unboxings, collection updates. I do these discussions. You know, check that stuff out. See what you like. You know, hit the like button, subscribe, turn your bell notifications on, and also uh, comment below anytime on any of my videos and let me know what you think. So today we're going to talk about bad movies that I like. Um, I got, I'm going to give a shout out to Fuzz. Uh, if you're not familiar with him, uh, he's got a channel called The Original Fuzz. And his link is below. You can check out. You know, if you really, if you like anything home theater related, movies and stuff like that. You know, definitely give his uh, channel a like. You know, check him out. He's got some really good discussions. I really enjoy his content, so I'm sure you will like it. I mentioned him because uh, not too long ago, he did this uh, same uh, discussion video here. You know, talking about bad movies he liked. And I thought that was a great idea. You know, it's a great, uh, in my opinion, it's a good topic. And it was really interesting because we all have different opinions out there. So it's a lot of times it's always cool to see, you know, what other people think about movies, you know, if you like it or dislike it and just, you know, in general, you know, what other people's thoughts are. And there's a lot of movies out there that get shit on left and right all the time, you know, for one reason or another. And, you know, a lot of times there's other people that just, you know, like it. And that's what I'm going to do here is I'm going to talk about movies that a lot of people really do not like and I do. You know, whether they're reboots or just whether they're bad scripted or uh, sometimes bad acting. And there's some movies that are just so freaking stupid that, you know, some people like. And there's a couple of men in this that you're going to excuse like, what the hell are you thinking? Or they, they even sound stupid. Now, this isn't a top 10. They're not in any particular order. Just, you know, I'm just going to run through them. And I'm going to talk about each one of them, give you an idea, you, have, like, you know, if you want to check them out yourself. Some of these I've actually watched recently. And the uh, ones we're going to start off with is I just watched yesterday. And we're going to start off with a reboot. Total Recall. I mean, we all know and love the original uh, classic with Arnold Schwarzenegger. And this one, I mean, most people really shit on this. It's a, such a bad movie. And... I try not to get into that camp. I try to give a movie its own credit, you know, give its own chance. Because, yes, I do agree with everyone. A lot of movies, they should not be remade. They're such great movies. But I can understand, you know, trying to bring them into today's uh, standards, get a new audience, give it a fresh look. So this one was just that. I mean, I really didn't want to watch it for the same reason, but I've owned it for a long time. Just never got around to watching it. The hard thing with these reboots is to try to disconnect yourself from the original. Because especially if it's something that you really love. So then you, you pop in the reboot and you got everything in your mind about how something should be happening. And this, you know, if the movie reboot is different. So it, it, that's the hard part is disconnecting. This was one of them I think it was hard for me to disconnect because I, such, I love the original Total Recall. But after about 20 minutes, I started really fall, falling into a groove of enjoying this. Yeah, you know, I like when some reboots are, they don't follow it, you know, you know, word for word, you know, action to action to make it a remake. You know, this is a, you know, a, what you would call a reboot. You know, it's got the same characters. And some of the uh, events are the same, but others, they change up quite a bit to be different, to set themselves apart. And I thought they did a really good job here. I was I was very impressed with this overall. You know, it doesn't have anything to do with going to Mars, but, you know, it does have the company called Recall about implanting memories into you. You know, it talks about, you know, how society, everything's falling apart throughout the world and... People, you know, the survivors are from two big uh, nations. We've got the United. 
I can't I can't remember the exact name of the you know how it has to do with the UK England and then the other part of the you know land that survived is Australia which is you know I uh, you know opposite ends of the earth so there's actually has a midway they actually created a big shaft that uh, connects the two and they call it the fall where you get in this thing and it, you know you travel from one side of the earth to the other and just like I want to say it's less than 20 minutes. And the Australia section, they call the colony, which is where a lot of the resistance, you know, the resistance that you had in the original movie. Here you have the resistance where, you know, they're being held under the thumb of the, you know, you, you know the UK. So again, it's a, this, I think this is a great movie in my opinion. It sets itself apart from the original. You know, I still love the original. Um, but I would put this right up there with it. Cause I, I just think you just have to keep an open mind and disconnect yourself from the original when it comes to these reboots. But I thought they did a really good job here. Next up, we have The Last Airbender. This is another one almost, it's unanimously, I think people really shit on this movie. You know, it's based on an animated TV series, which I knew nothing about. And I still don't. I've never watched it. I do have it because my wife liked it. So in that regard, this is one of those one. Same thing comes with yeah. You know, same thing goes with a uh, comic book movies and uh, video games being made in the movies. You know, I don't follow those. So when I watch a movie, I I have an um, I have an open mind, so I'm unbiased when I'm watching something. I don't know what to expect, and this is one of those I knew nothing about. So when I watched the movie. I loved it. I mean, honestly, I, I you know, watching it again, I still love the movie. I think it's great. It's sad it didn't, you know, catch on. People didn't like because when it went ended, I felt there was so much more they could have done with it. So yeah, this is another one that you know everyone hates that I I really like. This is definitely a favorite of mine. And plus, I you know forgot about how great the music score is. This is freaking phenomenal. Um, James Newton Howard did this. And I remember a couple, that was about two years ago, or maybe three years ago, I wanted to get the soundtrack to this, but the CDs were out of print. So if I wanted to get it on eBay, it would have cost me about like $40. And I just, I, I was like, I'm not paying that much for a CD. I want it, but not that bad. So I ended up paying for the digital copy of it, which is, I rarely buy digital. I want the physical copy in my hand. But I did buy the uh, digital copy of the soundtrack for this because I freaking love the music. And this is this movie is so impactful from the score itself. It just really gets to you. And also the movie itself, I mean, visually, this is stunning. It's got a great soundtrack. It's got DTS 5.1. And this is one of those I would love to see get a 4K of. Um, it's Paramount. So maybe we could see it, especially because this is be being remade. And from the early trailers I've seen, it looks pretty decent. So maybe they'll go back and redo this one on 4K. I would love. I would definitely fork out the money for it. But yeah, I would recommend, you know, if you haven't seen this, give it a chance. Because this is a really good movie. And next up, we have a Skyline. This is an alien invasion movie that most people hate. This came out about the same time that there was a Battle of Los Angeles came out. And I will give credit where credit's due that Battle of Los Angeles was better than this one. But this does not make this as a bad movie. I just, yes, it's kind of a cheap ripoff of Independence Day. But in my opinion, when it comes to alien invasion movies, it's hard to beat Independence Day. I mean, that one set the bar really high. But I really enjoyed this. You know, I bought it when it first came out and I liked it. And watch it again yesterday. I still really enjoy this movie. It's got a great the soundtrack. I mean, the audio, the score itself is incredible. And definitely gives your system a workout at times. It's got a serious earth rattling bass in it. So overall, Skyline, another great movie. I really enjoy. And a lot of people hate it. Now, next up is a, an old classic comedy. I'm not sure if it's hate. I wouldn't say if it's hated or not. It just I don't hear it talked about when it comes to some of these old, you know, classic uh, slapstick comedies. Again, I just don't. I'm not sure if it's hated or not. But I wanted to 
throw this in there because it's not talked about and some people might think it's you know cheesy and stupid and that is caveman has Ringo star Dennis Quaid an early early uh, role for him and Shelley long and you know it takes place you know caveman prehistoric times this is a like it is this is such a corny cheesy movie but it's freaking hilarious. I mean, you'll laugh your ass off, in my opinion. I mean, at least I did. But Ringo Starr, you know, he plays the an average caveman under the thumb of the roller played by John Matusak. And he's kind of got fallen in love with the girlfriend. And he wants to take over. And he wants to be head of the whole clan and have the girl. And But it's just so funny. All the, you know, he kind of gets thrown out and it just... It's, and of course, it's got old stop motion animation with the dinosaurs. And, you know, this was made back in 1981. So this was, you know, no computer graphics, but just good, cheesy fun. If you haven't seen Caveman, I would recommend checking this out because it is such a good movie. Now, next up is another one of those that's a really stupid TV made movie. You know, I grew up with it because I was, you know, I grew up with a band. I. Finally got this on DVD, and I'm not. I haven't watched it lately to see how bad it is after all these years. Kiss me, the Phantom of the Park. Definitely one of those you hear people talk about. One of the stupidest movies ever made. Again, I grew up with Kiss, and I remember watching this on TV, and you know, and liking it. But you gotta remember, this was uh, yeah, I just, I just can't remember. I forget when this was actually done. I should have. I didn't do any notes for this. This video was unscripted. I didn't take any notes. Probably should have. But yeah, this is such an old movie. Just it's so. It is so cheesy the way they you know they did the characters. I need to jot. I need to. I do need to throw this back in to see if I still like this at all or if it's still that bad. But. Again, it's one I I grew up with this and had to throw this in my list. So, Kiss Meets the Fan of the Park. Next up, we've got The Musketeer. Did get a lot of fanfare, um, but I really like it. It's a really good, you know, kind of a good uh, retelling of The Musketeers. You know, it's got some good action fight sequences. You know, it just falls on you know, the one guy... That, you know, he wants to avenge the death of his parents and he wants to become a musketeer and do that. Also has uh, Tim Roth in it, does a really good job. So if you haven't seen it, definitely I would give the musketeer a check. It, it's really good. I really like that. Next up we have The Thing. Now if you haven't seen this, this is actually is not a reboot. Which I, you know, at first that's probably why I didn't watch it for so long. Is, you know, The Thing from John Carpenter. Such a classic. You don't mess with that. But so instead, they instead of a reboot, this is actually a prequel. They actually took all the stuff. I mean, this actually, everything ties in with the original. So that's why I re you know, really like how they went about doing this. You know, they, they didn't want to remake such a great classic. They wanted to do something different. So that's why they went the prequel route and... They were, I thought they were just so faithful with the material. So if you're someone that's held out not wanting to watch this, thinking it was a bad remake or whatnot, you know, such if you're a big fan of the, of the original, give this one a spin because this is really good, very impressive with it. And they tried to, you know, there is some CG in it, but they try to uh, be faithful with material and they try to do a lot of uh, practical effects as well, which is really good because that's what the original was noted for. So I'm glad they went that route and didn't uh, try not to overdo the CG. So yeah, the thing here, this is very impressive. Uh, next up, we have another one that's not, I wouldn't call it hated, but it just um, depends on how you look at it. It could be too stupid for you. Schlock. Now, this is the first movie done by John Landis, who went on to become, you know, Animal House, you know, the Blues Brothers, American Werewolf in London. And this is the first movie he had done. It's basically, it's a parody of those old classic monster movies. You know, you take the werewolf, Frankenstein, Dracula. It also has uh, Rick Baker did the ape suit, which, you know, because... 
Of course, you know, now we all know Rick Baker is the, the maestro when it comes to, you know, special effects, especially when it comes to gorilla costumes. This is the first ape suit he had ever done. When he made this, he was still living with his mom, and some of the, the molds actually use his mom's oven to make the molds. So very interesting facts there. You know, you take John Landis and Rick Baker, who become such big names in industry now, and you look at this, how they got their start. And of course, John Landis played the role of Schlock Toxopus. You know, he actually wore that suit throughout the movie and not being able to talk and some of the mannerisms. I thought he did a wonderful job for not being an actor. You know, the Blu-ray here comes from Arrow. So if you, if, if you don't have this, I would recommend getting the uh, Arrow version of it. I actually did a Blu-ray review of it. You can check out and you know, got some screenshots that looked incredible. But yes, if you haven't seen this, definitely it's, you have to get this because even after all this time, I've seen this many times. I grew up with it on VHS. But yeah, I damn near pissed myself from watching this again because of some of the scenes in it are so freaking hilarious. And it's one of those that has a good... I mean, I'm not a big fan of commentary tracks. But sometimes these older classic movies, they can be interesting. And this one is. The commentary on this one is definitely worth listening to. So there we have it, Schlock, a, you know, a classic slapstick, you know, I don't know what you would describe it as, but it's a, it's a really fun movie that probably a lot of people might not like, but it's just so over the top, you just have to give it a chance. Now, next up, we have another reboot, Friday 13th from 2009. Now, this one is one of them that was probably, I wanted to watch the least because I'm such a big Friday 13th fan, a fan of Jason character. I just did not want to watch this because so all of the, I mean, from a get go, all the previews showed Jason being real agile, running and being smart. And I just, in my mind, I just thought that's so fucking stupid. I just, why change that? But after watching it, I really warmed up to it. I thought it was really good. I just thought it was a nice different take on the character. I mean, who says Jason has to be the slow, methodical, lumbering character? Oh, I'm going to kill you. Oh. Instead of being a smart, you know, agile character. So that part, I, I thought it was nice. I thought it was a nice, different take. The kills are freaking awesome. I loved it. So if you're a fan of Friday Thirteenth Jason movies, you know if you, I'm sure you might. You, if you're a fan, you've probably watched this. But if you've held off from watching it because you don't want anything to do with the reboot, give it a whirl. I you know, like I said, I really enjoyed this. Even as you know, as big of a Jason fan as I was, I ended up really liking this. Next up, we have I forgot for some reason I forgot to grab this one. I but I have to. It's a newer one I just got on 4K is a killer condom. This one, I actually did a, a f review of this, the 4K review you can check out. It sounds like a stupid movie. It probably could be to some people. And I only bought it because I had the graphic novel comic book back in the day that was pretty out there, you know, over the top. So that was the main reason. I, I was expecting a very bad movie but I had to have it, you know, from Vinegar Syndrome. But I actually enjoyed it. I mean, I actually see myself watching this again sometime. So, Killer Condom, I mean, if you've not seen it, you know, check out my review of it. You know, give the, give the movie a whirl. It is, it is fun. Next up, we've got another movie that I really don't know if there's hate for it. It just, it's never talked about. I mean, this is a movie that just, I think it's, it would be called an underdog title because it's just flies under the radar, but because no one, I've never seen anyone talk about this movie at all. John Carter. Now, I admit, I have not watched it for a while. When I first got it, I watched it. It's been several years. I need to pop this in and give it another whirl, but this is definitely a really good movie. I really enjoyed this one. To be honest, it's been so long since I've watched this, I don't even remember what it's about, but, you know, from memory, I just remember really liking this. Again, I just because, you know, no one talks about this. So I just wanted to give, you know, I again, I should have watched this again to give more in-depth thoughts about the movie itself. 
But it's a nice, you know, sci-fi movie. I do remember the CG was not that great. It was pretty cheesy effects. But I remember liking the movie overall. So definitely give this one a, a look if you get a chance. Next up, I've got a couple that's from a, a real popular franchise that started out great. The first three were rock solid, incredible movies. Then after that, just people really shit on these. And that is Die Hard number four, Live Free or Die Hard. And the fifth one, A Good Day to Die Hard. Most people really hate these movies. I rarely see anything good about them. Are they as good as the others? No. But they're popcorn movies. I mean, I love, I always love the character of John McClane. And I don't think any less of these. I really love both of these movies. I'm glad I have them. Now, I'm still hoping for the entire franchise to get a 4K release. Yeah, I know it was under the Fox Disney banner, but I'm hoping that with the Sony deal that maybe they can pick up and do all the diehards. I'm sure they'll make a lot of money because I'm sure, I know even though people don't like these, they'd probably buy them if they put them in a big box set. But if they put them on 4K, I'll, I'll, I'll buy these. I, like I said, I really like these movies. Next up, we've got Suburban Commando with Hulk Hogan. And I'll be honest, I have to, I'll, I'll admit to this, I like Hulk Hogan's movies. Is he a good actor? Hell no. He was a, he was a shitty actor in my opinion. But the movies are enjoyable. They're just cheesy fun for the family and kids. You know, if you, you know, the, those little Hulksters out there, they're fun movies. And for this, you know, for the topic of this video, I probably could have included any of Hulk Hogan's movies. You know, I was going to do Santa's, Santa with Muscles, but I decided you know, I wasn't going to talk about that one. But I just do mainly, most people would think of Hulk Hogan and Suburban Commando. You know, it's got Sh uh, Shelley Duvall in it, Christopher Lloyd. And also it's got The Undertaker, Mark Calloway, before he became The Undertaker. It's one of those movies that he will, does not want to talk about. He, will, he really hates to admit that he was a part of this movie. But I think it's a lot of fun. Again, it's really cheesy and stupid. But it's enjoyable. I still, you know, I watched this last, like a month or two ago. And I still enjoy this movie today. Just a lot of fun. Next up, we have another movie a lot of people hate to admit that they were involved with. Stop or My Mom Will Shoot with Sylvester Stallone. And yeah, they talked about re in a recent interview with uh, a sit down with uh, Stallone and uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. The, everyone knew it was a bad movie to begin before they even made it. But because the two were so competitive as far as wanting to do movies, the the agents of both the guys, they, you know, they talked about this uh, Schwarzenegger. He didn't want to do it. But his agent kind of told Stallone's agent that Schwarzenegger was interested in it when he really wasn't. And Stallone, was they just, because they're competitive, they, they, that's the reason he did this. And afterwards, they're like, you know, of course, Arnold's laughing the whole time. He's like, yeah, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> Have fun with it. But in my opinion, I had a lot of fun with this. I really enjoyed this. Was it Stallone's best work? No. But it's just pure fun. You just gotta got throw everything off the window. And uh, what's her? I can't remember her name in it. Estelle Getty. She's a lot of fun as well. It's just a, it's, like I said, it's just a fun movie. So stop or my mom will shoot. That is, it's not, it, it does classify as people hate this movie. It's a bad movie. I really enjoy it. So next up, we have a couple comic book movies that everyone shits on, but I enjoy them. Again, I don't I don't follow comics, so I'm unbiased. I don't have any expectations with the characters. So I just go into it with an open mind and enjoy them. We got the Green Lantern with Ryan Reynolds. This is definitely one everyone hates this movie. But I really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. It's really funny. Uh, maybe that's what people don't like. But it's got some good action in it and just... It's overall a good movie. It's a popcorn movie for me. Yeah, you know, I think if you don't, you know, follow comic books or those, you know, the comic characters, I think this is how you probably enjoy this movie. And so I knew nothing about the characters, so I liked it. Uh, next up, we have 
Green Hornet. And I'm going green here. Another one I most people do not like. It's got Seth Rogen in it. This is a really enjoyable movie. And again, I didn't read the comic book, so what the hell? I had a lot of fun with this movie. It has some stuff that's kind of over the top, but again, it's a I look at it as a popcorn movie. It's entertainment, a way to forget about things. So yeah, The Green Hornet, another one of those bad movies I really like. Next up, we have another reboot that really gets shit on by a lot of people. People really do not want anything to do with this. RoboCop. Now, it's funny how the one of the other reboots, the Total Recall, you know, the original done by Paul uh, Verhoeven, and uh, this one was done by Paul Verhoeven as well. The original, at least. It was such a great, you know, cult classic that should not be messed with. But again, I can understand bringing in today's times, get a new audience that may not like that older style of filmmaking. So I, I get why they sometimes they want to reboot these movies, get the new audience. But once you disconnect yourself from the original, I freaking love this movie. I, you know, I definitely want to pick this up on 4K. It is available. You know, they you know change it up. You know, they did a lot of build up of the character Murphy. And say, you know, instead of kind of jumping right into it, they, they did a lot to build that character up before they got to killing him off and making him RoboCop. But yeah, I really enjoyed this so damn much. So a lot of you are thinking, gonna think I'm crazy by this. There's parts, of, you know, overall, I think there's parts about this movie that's actually better than the original, in my opinion. You know, just the way it's done, the way it's filmed. You know, I still love the original, but there's just, I really like the new take on this. It was very well done, in my opinion. So if you've not seen this, and if you're a fan of that classic, like I said, disconnect yourself. Try to get that out of your mind and enjoy it for what this is. This is really good. I mean, one of the things they changed, you know, one of the things that was about the original that was over the top is you build this uh, indestructible cop that is shooting I mean, shooting real live rounds, you know, maiming the bad guys when in essence, you know, it's like he shouldn't have to because you can't shoot him. I mean, it's not going to do any good to shoot him. So why are you shooting live rounds trying to kill the bad guys? So I like the that aspect of what they changed here. You know, shooting little bags and non-lethal weapons. So I like that aspect of the changing the story of making RoboCop more non-lethal. So yeah, give this a chance if you have not seen this yet. Uh, next up, we've got a video game adaptation. Doom. With uh, The Rock. And, you know, he, did, he wasn't known into Wayne Johnson yet. It was just The Rock. Now this movie, you know, I've had this for years and I've never watched it. I've just heard so many shit stories about it. But again, I never played the game, so I had no expectations. And this was a first time watch for me. And I, I loved it. I thought this was a really good movie. I had some practical effects and some CG that's not so great. So I really had a lot of fun with this movie. Again, I didn't play the game, so I didn't know anything about it. So in that aspect, if you open up your mind and forget about the game, it, this is a pretty good movie. I was really, I really like this. Now we're getting down to the end of the list. Uh, this is one I, I meant to watch again. I have not watched this in years. I had this DVD for ages. I've watched it on VHS. I think I still got the VHS somewhere. Student Bodies. This is... This is an all-time classic parody of the slasher movies. You know, you take the Halloween, you know, the stalker movies. This is one of those too stupid, it's funny movies. I, like I said, I've watched this from VHS. I loved it. You know, when you see all the, uh, when he goes to kill, you see it's a POV footage of the killer looking through a mask. You know, like he did with Michael at the beginning. But you see, you, you hear his heavy breathing. That's a part that's just so damn funny in all the kill scenes. You can just hear, <laughs> it's just, it's, it's hilarious. You know, the opening scene sequence when he's going through the house and looking for a murder weapon, you see all this stuff. You see knives or noose and, and, and you know, uh, uh. all of a sudden he comes across a paper clip. 
And that's what he's using as a murder weapon. It's just, it's over the top. If you've not seen this, give this one a whirl. It's so freaking hilarious. You know, it is stupid, but you just gotta watch it. You know, if you like that kind of over the top stuff, give student bodies a whirl, cause I, I, I love this movie. It's such a great classic. Now we get to the last one, the one I saved for last. I've had it on uh, DVD for ages. I had it on VHS. I grew up with it on VHS. It's one of those too stupid, it's funny movies. And I just got the Blu-ray, and I, I need to watch this again and see how it holds up after all these years. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Yes, it's it's stupid, but it's it's funny. It just... I, again, I need to throw this in there and see how I, if I still like it as much as I did. And not only have they, you know, the popularity or unpop, I don't know, they, they did make a sequel to this called Return of the Killer Tomatoes, which I have not watched. I need to get that and add it to my collection. But yeah, like I said, like, well, growing up with us on VHS, I had to get this on Blu ray. I'll probably even do a, a review of this before long after I uh, watch it again. So Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, the final one, and my bad movies I actually enjoy. So that pretty much does it from uh, all the bad movies out there that I actually like. Again, shout out the original Fuzz over there, you know, for, for giving me an idea, because this is I thought this was a great topic that I wanted to get out there myself and give out, you know, my thoughts on some of the movies I that are bad that I actually enjoy. Again, check out his channel. He does a really he's got some great content over there. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, please comment below on any of these, you know, what your thoughts are. I'm sure a lot of these, you know, you, you probably don't like that I actually liked. Now, don't be afraid to, you know, tell me I'm full of shit and why I, for liking something that I should not like. Now, as I was putting this stuff together, you know, getting the movies together for this video, I started thinking, now what about movies out there that people love that I can't stand? So... I'm going to do a movie on that. Because there's a couple right at the top of my head that that are such beloved movies that everyone loves. It's everyone's top of their list. I freaking hate. And there's movies out there people love that I couldn't even watch. I would try to watch them. So I, hopefully within the next week or so, I'm going to throw together a video that movies that I cannot stand, that I cannot watch, that people love. That'll be a fun one because... You're all going to think I'm crazy for some of them because I, you love these movies and I freaking can't stand them. So until then, you know, check out my other videos on my channel. Like, subscribe, turn your bell notifications on. You know, again, comment below. Let me know what you think of all this. And we'll see you soon. Geek out.